Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We're back again with more Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous, and this time, want to get into a Camellia build. She came in second place for the poll. Seems like a lot of you are confused about how to build her up properly, and honestly, I can't blame you. <laughs> I think the first two, maybe three times I played the beta, I would either bench her or I would respect her into a different class. I absolutely hated Spirit Hunter when I started this game. But over time, I actually played around with it, figured it out, and I've come to a build that I personally really like and think works really well for her. And frankly, I think she's an insanely useful potential member of your team as long as you know how to work with her properly. Let's go ahead and dive into our initial build. So she starts with a skill focus in trickery, which is part of her racial heritage. Great choice for her. Um, you want to be building up trickery and stealth. So it's nice to go ahead and get that initial boost in skill points. And then she also has weapon finesse, which allows her to use her dexterity modifier instead of her strength modifier on attack rolls. And then you get her at level two. So there's a lot of flexibility as far as how you build her up. Very, very nice. She has simple weapon proficiency, and then she's also proficient with medium armor, which you'll be using for her probably until around level eight or nine. So you want to focus on getting mithril medium armor, which is going to allow her to get that armor um, bonus to her AC, but at the same time, will use as much of her dexterity modifier as possible. She gets Object Bond, which is going to allow her to restore uh, one spell per day. Not useful for her, but it's here. And then she's also going to get Spirit Weapon Enchantment. And what this is going to do is give her multiple ways to add a different effect on whatever weapon she is holding. So when you first get this, it's going to allow you to put an enhancement bonus on the weapon. So a level uh, a plus one or a plus two weapon, with this, you'll be able to increase it to maybe a plus three or a plus four or whatever. And then over time, you're gonna get more effects, such as getting giving a weapon the ghost touch ability or giving it fire or frost or shock, things of that nature. Me personally, I prefer Keen because it's gonna increase um, the possibility of her doing critical hits. And as you'll see when we get into the combat example, her critical hits can do massive, massive damage. Now she starts with the Green Faith, which is going to unlock specific hexes for her and add a couple of elements to her build. And she's gonna be able to choose hexes throughout the level up. And hexes have a wide variety of effects and things that they can do for her character. Let's go ahead and dive into the overall build so we can see how to put this together. Now, when it comes to skills, like I said, she's already gonna come with ranks in trickery and stealth. Me personally, I stick with that. Even though she doesn't have a class skill for stealth, to me, if you're using Camellia as your trickery person, more than likely you don't have people like Wolgif or Arushale on the team. And not only do they specialize in trickery, but they also add a great deal to the stealth skill for your overall team. So if you're using her instead of them, it's worth it to go ahead and increase those ranks and stealth. And since you're gonna be pumping up dexterity so much, over time, it will make up for the fact that she doesn't have a class skill here. So that's personally the way that I focus on her skill points. Now here at level two for your hex, you definitely, definitely, definitely want to stick with what the automatic recommendation is and get Ice Plant. It's going to give you a plus two natural armor bonus to AC, which is really nice, especially at level two. But what's even more important is that at level three, you're going to enter into a place that's going to allow you to buy an item that will give you an additional AC bonus on top of that plus two, as long as you have Ice Plant as one of your hexes. This is going to be a great bonus for of protection for Camellia 
and makes her much, much, and makes it much easier for her to be able to tank for you all throughout act one. So I definitely highly recommend if you're going to use her as your tank, this is a combo you should be doing no matter what your overall build or vision for her is. All right, now at level three, the automatic recommendation is dodge, but you all know how I feel about those monk feats. I avoid them like the plague. We're gonna take off dodge and instead scroll up here to weapon focus, get her started on doing more damage. So we'll go weapon focus and then choose rapier. At level four, you're gonna be able to increase an attribute point, so go ahead and put it into dexterity and continue to pump dexterity throughout your level ups. For your level four hex, me personally, I choose evil eye. It's gonna give a one enemy a negative two penalty to AC, ability checks, attack rolls, saving throws, or skill checks, and that penalty will increase to negative four at eighth level. The only drawback about evil eye is that it is a mind affecting effect, and so there are some enemies that are immune to mind affecting and therefore also immune to evil eye. I didn't, I haven't experienced that come up that often, but I also usually play on normal. So it's only like the hardest of the hardest enemies that I really feel the need to debuff. Whereas if I was on core or something else, there would probably be a lot more enemies that I would want to apply this to. And therefore a lot more enemies that I would find out, oh, this guy's immune to it. So you could choose whether or not it makes sense for you to take this here. But for me personally, I love having Evil Eye right off the bat. And for your level five feet, I go ahead and go with Fencing Grace. It's gonna allow you to use your Dexterity modifier instead of your Strength modifier for your weapon's damage. All right, and we're gonna do things a little bit differently this time. I need to take one Mythic level while we are actually building up our character levels. So at Mythic level one, you wanna scroll down and get a second spirit and then go ahead and pick up wind. It's gonna open up some really, really nice hexes for us. It also gives her a bunch of bonus spells, but honestly, you're not gonna use those that much. Hexes are really where it's at. And for your level seven feet, scroll down. And you all know I absolutely love outflank. If you got a character doing physical damage, whether it be melee or range, definitely feel like you should have this on them. And for your level eight hex, I would get air barrier. So it's gonna give you a plus four armor bonus to AC that actually increases by two at level seven. So it's actually plus six at the time that you take it. And then it's gonna increase by, by an additional two every four levels after the seventh level. And at level 13, the barrier causes incoming arrows, rays, and other ranged attacks requiring an attack roll against her to suffer a 50% mischance. On top of all that, you can use this barrier for one hour per day per shaman level. So it is very, very easy to keep this barrier on basically at all times when you're going through dungeons. And obviously it adds a huge amount of protection for Camellia, great stuff. For your level nine feet, get combat reflexes. Her dexterity bonus should be sky high. So she's gonna get a lot of attacks of opportunity off of this. And it's gonna be nice to be able to do that while flat footed. For your level 10 hex, grab battle master. It's gonna give her more attacks of opportunities and it's going to give her weapon specialization for the rapier. And at level 16, she's gonna get the greater weapon focus feat for the rapier as well. So make sure for the weapon specialization, you choose rapier. At level 11, get improved critical, rapier. At level 12, get protective luck. At level 13, get critical focus. At level 15, get what should be a very nice increase in damage for you, pick up vital strike. So Camellia, her base attack bonus it never gets that high. In fact, it doesn't even get high enough for you to get greater vital strike. So because she doesn't get that many attacks, you're not losing much damage by instead focusing on doing a single great attack. And once you get improved vital strike and add mythic vital strike to this, you will be able to do a massive amount of damage every single time Camellia uses her rapier. For your level 16 feet, grab champ. And then you're gonna have the greater weapon focus that you get from Battlemaster. Make sure you choose Rapier. For your level 17 feet, get improved Vital Strike. For your level 18 hex, 
Go ahead and grab Fortune. For your level 19 feet, get Piranha Strike. And then for your level 20 Hex, I would grab Wind Ward. Now, this is going to give you a ward that makes it where arrows, rays, or other ranged attacks that require an attack roll suffer a 20% mischance. And then at level 16, this increases to 50%. I've tried to test this. I can't figure out if the barrier stacks with air barrier, which already gives you a 50% chance for these types of attacks to miss. So since it's not a specific type of bonus, like it's not an enhancement or a, um, um, you all know the types of bonuses that I'm talking about, like the ones that basically cannot stack with each other. Since it doesn't specifically have that verbiage, my assumption is that these two will stack together, but I'm not completely sure about that, which is part of the reason why I saved this for level 20. But if you're able to confirm that they really do stack together, it might be worth it to actually take this even earlier, even though keep in mind, it only lasts for one minute per shaman level. So it's not like the other barrier where it's going to basically last for hours for you. At Mythic level two, go into Extra Mythic Ability and grab Ever Ready. You're going to be doing a ton of Attacks of Opportunity, so this bonus on Attacks of Opportunity is really helpful for you. At Mythic level three, take Enduring Spells. At Mythic level four, go into Improve Critical, Rapier. At Mythic level five, get Greater Enduring Spells. At Mythic level six, get Vital Strike Mythic at Mythic level 7, get Leading Strike at Mythic level 8, get Weapon Focus Rapier at Mythic level 9. You can kind of grab what you want. Um, if you're fine, you're still missing a lot, you could get Thundering Blows, of course. If for whatever reason Camellia is going down a lot, you could get Last Stand. You got a couple of good options here. As far as Mythic level 10, same deal. I would probably end up picking up another Mythic ability. So you have Last Stand, you have Mythic Charge, you have Thundering Blows. Whatever works for you for these last two, you can go ahead and pick up. Me personally, I'm going to go ahead and get Thundering Blows because since with Vital Strike, you're only hitting once, when you miss, it's basically a dud turn and that's really irritating to me. So having Thundering Blows and ensuring that some damage is always done no matter what, it works for me. Okay, so now that we went through the character and mythic levels, let's go ahead and take a look at the spell book. Um, we definitely want a large person. It's not useful at all for Camellia, but it is very useful, especially in Act 1, to help out Sela or any other um, physical character that you have who's tanking or maybe land for archery. So it's useful to have this on her. And then of course, remove fear, bless. Basically you wanna fill her up with all of the spells that don't require a high casting attribute because then it frees up your clerics and your other spell casters to devote all their slots to what you really, really want them to be doing. And so then at level two, um, she's going to get access to Blur once you take the additional Wind Spirit. That's very, very nice to put on any tank. Bark Skin is a fantastic option to put on all of your tanks as well. Or Archers that you want to have up close for uh, snapshot purposes. And then, of course, she's got False Life as well. You definitely want to put that on her. Give her some additional hit points while she's up front. And then you can fill that last slot with whatever you want. At level three, there's magical vestments. You should definitely be putting that on all of your tanks or upfront characters. Keep in mind that you need to put two applications onto Camellia for this, one for armor and then one for shield. And she can only use this in her spirit magic slots. So you need a cleric or somebody else or a scroll that has access to this spell so that you can use it and make sure you get that double dose for her. She's really, really gonna benefit from it. Then besides that, Delay Poison Communal is a great option. The Elemental Resist Elements and then Protection from Elements she gets later on. Um, definitely easy to put on her. And then Animate Dead is a fantastic summon 
to have available. So again, on a cleric or somebody else, it's filling up their slots that they could do something else with. But for Camellia, it's perfect because she's not gonna be casting a whole bunch of spells, especially not in enemies. So it becomes easy to have this on her to just throw it out when need be. At level four, Thorn Body, she's gonna be right up front. So this is a great option for her. False Life Greater, remember that you can use both False Life and False Life Greater together. Um, I put one casting of Restoration on her because you should be doing things to ensure that you don't have to cast Restoration a whole lot, but if for whatever reason it's helpful for your particular team to have more castings of it, you could of course fill those slots out. And then Divine Power is going to help her in melee, gives a plus one luck bonus on attack rolls, weapon damage rolls, strength checks, and strength base checks for every three caster levels. So it's going to make it much easier for her to be able to hit with her attacks. You can make an additional attack with this, but a lot of times I have haste on, so it doesn't mean that much for me. At level five, animal growth is fantastic. If you have a pet, you definitely wanna go ahead and throw this on them. And then true seeing, and later on true seeing communal are both great to see through all the invisibility and concealment that enemies love to use. Otherwise, I just filled it out with you know, their breath of life is uh, nice to be able to bring somebody back from the dead if need be. And then she has a couple of more summons, nothing special. Then at level six, this is going to be really, really nice for you. You're going to get all of the mass versions of these enhancement bonuses. So plus four strength, plus four constitution, plus four um, to wisdom and plus four to charisma. Only thing that it's missing is intelligence, I think the clerics might get access to the intelligence version, but, oh, and it doesn't also doesn't have the plus four to dexterity. So the advantage of all these is really to increase the saves of your team. Like if you've got a character who really, really needs strength in order to do more damage, more than likely they're already going to have a belt that's going to have a plus four enhancement bonus or higher. But most of your characters probably aren't wearing belts or objects that give them a plus four to constitution or a plus four to wisdom if they don't actually use wisdom as their casting stat or something of that sort. So these all help to really, really increase the defense of your team and help ensure that they're able to clear the saves that they might potentially need to, to clear. So that's the real reason why it's so useful for you. And then in addition to those, you definitely wanna have Stone Skin Communal. It's gonna get some great physical protection for you and True Seeing Communal to make sure everyone is able to see through all that invisibility and concealment and the things that enemies like to do. At level seven, we just stuck Firestorm on here because neither one of the spirit uh, magic options really work for her in this build. And then you wanna again, focus on buffs especially because we've got those enduring spells and greater enduring spells. So remember all these buffs that I'm going through are going to last for 24 hours. So if you need it, legendary proportions, it tossed a dinosaur bone. So it's really preferable to cast this with a scroll. But if you need to, there's a slot here available where you can use Camellia for it and it'll last for 24 hours. And then Ice Body is absolutely fantastic protection, giving her immunity to cold, um, and immunity to ability score damage, blindness, critical hits, disease, drowning, electricity, poison, stunning, and all spells or attacks that affect physiology or respiration. Absolutely fantastic stuff. And then we also threw on Creeping Doom, which is a summoning conjuration spell, but it is not affected by a target spell resistance. They can uh, do a save for partial damage, but I don't see really anything better here to fill the slots up with. So might as well go ahead and use it. And to me, having these Creeping Doom centipedes surrounding her kind of fits in with the kind of character she is. Um, at level eight, Frightful Aspect is going to be absolutely fantastic for. The size bonus doesn't help her for as far as damage because she's focusing more on dexterity than, than strength. But there is a... a base bonus to damage from increasing your size, even though the attribute increase doesn't help you. And because she's so much bigger and taking up so much room, it's going to allow her to get much, many more attacks of opportunity, 
which is going to be really, really nice for her build. Otherwise, I'm not really impressed with anything in this list for her build specifically. So I just fill it out with some more summons that you can throw out if you feel like you're going to get in a really tough fight. And then finally at level nine, she's got a summon here for the spirit slot because shape change doesn't really help her all that much. And then you have access to winds of vengeance, which is going to surround her with winds that will damage enemies if they try to attack her. Foresight is going to give her an additional bonus to AC. And then of course, Heal Mass is fantastic when you need to be bailed out of a situation. And it, while your cleric or your main healer, of course is gonna be able to use this a lot easier. Having it on Camellia is just another way to free up slots for the kind of things that you might want your cleric to be doing instead. And so all of this together, again, she's not like this great spell caster. She's not going to be damaging enemies left and right with her spells. But I just feel like she fits really, really nice with the team dynamic as far as freeing up roles or slots for them to be able to do other things with the spell casting abilities that you want them to be able to use. As far as the inventory goes, I did use her for this game, but I didn't optimize her gear the way I probably should have. Um, so this is the Icy Protector ring I was talking about earlier. It's gonna give you an additional plus two natural armor bonus to AC. So when you combine that with the Ice Plant Hex early in the game, very, very nice combo. Obviously, you want to keep up with her buckler. Make sure that you're finding her a plus five rapier. Um, we don't need to have armor on them because of the hex. You want to find something that's going to increase her trickery skills. So this is going to give her a plus 10 boost. I've got a headband of mental per perfection for her. You need to find something that is going to increase her wisdom. Otherwise, when you get to those higher levels, you're not going to have any spell slots. So you don't need uh, intelligence and charisma is not necessary. I just liked having this mental perfection ban on her, but wisdom, you definitely, definitely want to make sure you have something on her that is increasing that. And basically you just want to focus on melee um, related boost for her. So like I said, I didn't do a great job of that this go round, but you get the idea, you know what she needs. And of course you want to have a belt on her that is going to increase her dexterity and help her to attack and damage if at all possible. Okay, so now we're in a combat situation. And as you can see, most of the buffs that I have on Camellia, she was able to cast herself. Um, we needed someone else to put heroic invocation or whatever form of heroism your team has onto her. And then she needs someone else with magical vestments because she only has one casting of it. And you want to make sure you put it on both her armor and her shield. Um, you need someone with magic weapons so that she's able to attack better and do more damage. And finally, Crusader's Edge is nice for her as well. All of these other buffs, though, are she can cast by herself. Many of them apply to the entire team and they're going to last for 24 hours. And what I found out just now that I didn't know before is actually her enhancement to buffs applies to hexes as well. So air barrier is going to last for 24 hours and wind ward is going to last for 24 hours. So very, very nice stuff. All right. And just to make clear as well, you see her armor class is 69, and that's with a negative two to AC from size. So she can easily build her AC up to just massive, massive numbers with very little effort. And if you combine this with the protective hex, which is going to ensure that an enemy has to be able to successfully hit her twice in a row in order to be able to hit her once, she is just an absolutely incredible tank and definitely someone who fits right into that upfront position. So great, great stuff. Now let's go ahead and get started with the combat. We of course are going to be using improved vital strike. Um, I'm sorry, one last note. My main character was a trickster who has ranks of perception. So at the beginning of every battle, he attempts to paralyze everybody that we're going up against. And if they're not paralyzed, they're shaken. 
And that's why the people we're going up with are shaken. Even if that wasn't the case, she does have frightful aspects. So you would be attempting to shake enemies automatically anyway. Okay. And on the very first hit, she does a critical hit, which does massive, massive damage. Like I said, 403 damage because of that improved vital strike. And then in addition to that, she did 34 damage from leading strike because I think we, oh, we attempted to hit. That's interesting. We attempted to hit him, but didn't actually, oh, we did. We did successfully hit him. And that's why that leading strike mark was placed on him. So usually she's going to do somewhere between 100 and 150 damage if she's able to strike successfully. But if she's able to critical hit, whoo, -hoo, whoo. It's a, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. All right, let's keep moving forward. All right, and now it's her turn again. We've got a long, long line of uh, giants in front of her, so we'll just pick one of them. And like I said, with just a regular hit, usually it's gonna do somewhere between 100 and 150. We got a little bit more because of the electricity, not that much. So one of them tried to hit her. Her armor class is 71. When it tried to hit her, it was an attack result of 38, not nearly enough in order to be able to strike. And I don't, I think I might have forgotten to mention it, but we are on unfair right now. So even on unfair difficulty with just standard effort, we didn't bounce around to four or five different classes, just sticking with Spirit Hunter. She is able to get her AC up to massive numbers. All right, let's just try to attack again. And then Vital Strike, once again, we're able to do a critical hit. 387 damage this time. And again, we did Leading Strike, 33 damage. Just massive, massive numbers. All right, back to our turn again. They're surrounding me, but Sela's a little bit too close. So they've been absolutely obliterating her. But every time they attempt to attack Camellia, it is flat out a miss. They're not coming anywhere close to her armor class. All right, and we'll go ahead and attack the closest one. And 134 with a regular hit. Once again, all of them took a swing, all of them missed. Let's go ahead and attack again. 144. All of them swung, all of them missed. 135, he's dead. All right, this time two of them gave up on attacking Camellia and instead trying to attack the horse. Um, one of them did attack her again and still missed. And once again, critical hit, 389 damage, an additional 36 from leading strike. All right, now both of them have given up on attacking her and instead are attacking the horse. 149 damage with another 30 from leading strike. Again, the giant continues attacking the horse. 134 damage, still attacking the horse. 124 damage. Horse is down now. Neither one of neither the horse nor Sela were built for drama the way Camellia is, but this should about do it. And one more time, one more critical hit, 378 damage with an additional 37 damage from leading strike. And again, that is on unfair difficulty. So with this build, you basically make Camellia an absolute melee monster and someone who can fill in a lot of the gaps you have regarding spell casting and someone who is absolutely fantastic at filling in that tank role. You can basically throw her in the middle of some really, really hard hitting enemies and she'll stand right there toe to toe with them. And every so often she will absolutely blow them up for major damage making her a very, very useful character to have on your team. So that is the build. I'm looking forward to hearing your feedback. Let me know if there's something that you would have done differently. And as always, if you enjoy this video, please leave me a like down below, share this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.